and welcome to my spoiler review for Big Hero 6. If you have not yet seen Big Hero 6, then you can click here for my non-spoiler review. Okay, still here? Then let's get started. You know how they say that every kid's movie has a message? Well, what I learned from Big Hero 6 is that only chumps run into burning buildings to rescue people. Yes, I too thought that was a strange takeaway, but that's exactly what Callahan says about Tadashi, and Callahan is never proven wrong. As you might be able to guess, I am not happy about Tadashi's death in Big Hero 6, not just because I thought it sent that weird message, but because it was totally unnecessary. Now, ever since Bambi, there's been this running gag about how Disney parents always die and there's always death in Disney movies. But at this point, it's getting ridiculous. And someone needs to tell the people in Disney's story department that there are other compelling motivations out there for characters besides the death of a loved one. Why put Hero through so much pain? Not only does he have to lose his parents, which also seemed totally unnecessary, but then Tadashi has to die a horrible death after they did such a wonderful job setting up their relationship as brothers. It was painful and totally, again, unnecessary. And then they do the same thing with Baymax, where he has to sacrifice himself in that other dimension, which I also thought was totally unnecessary. And while they were talking, I was like, okay, I guess this is some kind of, uh, you know, teaching less a teaching moment about how to deal with the death of a loved one. And what happens, you know, you know, Hero couldn't say goodbye to Tadashi, but here he can say goodbye to Baymax, and Baymax is saying what Tadashi surely would have said because he's Tadashi's creation, etc., etc., etc. But then that whole thing jumps out the window when Hero rebuilds Baymax. Because he couldn't rebuild Tadashi, I guess you could say, oh, well, that was Tadashi's soul in the card, etc., etc. But, you know, I didn't think that was necessary to be a part of the story, uh, and I would have loved to have seen Tadashi on that team. And as I've said many times, this is all part of the emotional manipulation that Pixar has become so notorious for, in my opinion, uh, and I don't like seeing John Lasseter bring it over to Disney Animation. The only reason to see Tadashi cry and the only reason to have that scene with Baymax is just to get you emotionally. And those kind of character sacrifices need to mean something. They need to have come somewhere. They need to have been built throughout the story uh, instead of just being there, you know, for uh, you know, emotional touch, uh, you know, touchstones to try and get the audience attached to the film. I just, they just felt cheap to me, I guess. Uh, un unnecessary, unearned, and unearned. So that was very frustrating for me and really hurt me about the film. So I'm going to go through, I always go through these uh, spoiler reviews by character, but today I'm going to do something a little different, and I usually do it by, you know, the order of how big the roles are, but instead I'm going to do it by my favorite characters in the film. So however I discuss them is how I liked them the most. So of course, we have to start with Tadashi, who again, I just thought was such a wonderful character. I thought they didn't have this good a male character. Hero as well, but, uh, but Tadashi in particular since Aladdin. He had a lot of the same Aladdin qualities and also a little bit of the same uh, look visually. I think I wouldn't be surprised to find out that Tadashi and Hiro are somewhat modeled after Aladdin. But Tadashi was just such a wonderfully kind person and smart and talented and just such a stand-up guy that I actually wanted him to be the villain. You know, we were talking in all the trailers about, oh, it's the brother. It's clearly the brother. Of course, it's not the brother. But I couldn't even imagine who else it might be because when he was on the ground and Hiro was waiting for him to turn over, I was like, Please be Tadashi. I never wanted anything so badly in an animated movie. I was wishing with all my heart, and it was for nothing. So that's how likable Tadashi was. And I'm curious if you guys connected with him as much. And I'm sure the Disney animators and writers are saying, Success! That's why you cared so much about his death, because we made you love him. And I'd say, yes, but you did it in a cruel way, because then you then cared the, killed the character off unnecessarily. So Tadashi, fantastic. And maybe they can make a prequel instead of a sequel. So I love Tadashi. All right, Hero. Hero was actually my second favorite character. I thought he was really likable, and I thought I thought all the voice work here was quite good, but Ryan Potter did a fantastic job with Hero's voice. He made him incredibly likable, and he handled a lot of the very nuanced parts of his role. I mean, Hero had to deal with a lot of pain, again, unnecessarily, but I thought Ryan Potter did a great job with that. And I just loved the whole Hero Tadashi family. I liked I liked their um, mixed race family. I liked the photos on the back of the wall. I thought that was really, it was very subtly done, but still it was still prominent enough to make an impact on the viewer. And I really liked, you know, piecing their family together. I wanted to know more about their family, the Hamada family. And I think that's a big win for Disney, at least in that regard. I don't like, again, what they did with it, but I liked what they were coming from and the foundation they established. I, you know, as much as everyone else liked uh, Elsa and Anna, 
I loved the Hamada brothers. I thought they were that great. I thought they were just wonderful. And what parent wouldn't want their children to get along that well and to be that kind to each other? You know, they really genuinely helped each other out. They shared a room, basically, and they were able to do it in a positive manner. They weren't fighting or picking on each other. It was just really wonderful to see. And so I'd also like totally bought Hero as an inventor. I thought all those aspects about him really worked. I also thought it was funny when he had that invention for the, um, you know, applying to, the, to that program at the university. As soon as he had his presentation, I was like, you don't need School Hero. You know, I, I think he should go find a think tank to join or start his own company to compete with Cray. Uh, it was just, it was amazing. Now, of course, there was a lot of Tony Stark and Hiro Hamada. Uh, a ton of Tony Stark, actually, from the way he acted to the kind of inventions that he had, how he interacted with other people, to the way he, his tech was established. And so, uh, you know, but I think Hiro Hamada would do Tony Stark proud. But I really like the character a lot. I'll be curious to see how he connects with the audience and if he has a lot of potential going forward. I saw a character uh, already dressed up for a meet and greet at the uh, premiere for Big Hero 6, and I hope to see lots of Hero Hamadas around uh, the Disney parks. So, great character. All right, the next thing I actually liked was Honey Lemon. I thought she was really wonderful. I didn't think she was particularly well developed, but I thought her character design was so strong and she had so much potential. She's third on this list. I just loved her. I thought she looked great, I thought she was very smart, uh, but I thought still very girly. I think those are all really important things to um, establish when it comes to science because I think that's sometimes what discourages some girls from going into a career of science. They feel they have to be uh, you know, not as feminine as they would like, but I think that Honey Lemon is a great role model for young girls who are considering a career in science. She was always a lot of fun, uh, and I loved uh, not only her character design and her civilian uh, outfit, but also her superhero outfit. And I thought her purse was fantastic. The way she would enter uh, the, the chemical, you know, uh, combinations to make her little spheres was really fun. And I thought even the way that was animated, the way she could type it so quickly, it just really captured my imagination. And I appreciated her positive attitude. She seemed like a really nice person. The only thing I didn't like about her was the way she pronounced Hiro's name. And she insisted on pronouncing it like uh, in proper Japanese pronunciation with like the accent and everything. But I'm like, nobody else is talking in that kind of accent. No one else is speaking Japanese and no one else is addressing Hero in that way. So she just it came across as pretentious and it reminded me actually of Josh Brolin's character over in Inherent Vice. So that was the one thing that bugged me about her character. And I would take her aside and be like, honey, no one else is calling him like Hero or whatever you're saying. It's just weird and it's a little condescending. So that was her only problem. But otherwise, loved her. I can see a bright future for Honey Lemon as well. Now, the fourth thing on my list is actually not a person, but a place, and that's San Francisco, which I thought was so beautifully realized. I would love to take a tour of San Francisco. It's just a, a video game world on Disney Infinity, I guess, waiting to be explored. I just thought it was the, the attention to detail and the way they incorporated both, the, both elements of Tokyo and San Francisco, both in terms of their, you know, architecture and, uh, you know, visual aspects, but also culturally was really impressive. It was just instantly a place that I believed existed and wanted to go to. And I was like, oh, I can just not only see the video game world, but I can see the theme park additions. It was just it was phenomenal. I really liked it. Again, it was a place that I wanted to go. And some of my favorite scenes is when Baymax was soaring over the city and giving us kind of a tour. I loved this tech. It was just, you know, as someone who likes Epcot, it was just a beautiful thing to behold. And I think this is another, that's another great thing about this movie. It's going to hopefully buoy, uh, I hope other people like it more than I did, uh, but it's going to buoy maybe the science aspects that together with uh, Marvel live action movies of the Disney properties. So, loved San Francisco. Next, I'd have to say Cray. I know he was a jerk and, you know, he uh, risked the life of Callahan's, uh, Callahan's daughter, but what I loved about Cray was his character design. As soon as I saw him, I was like, Disney, you've outdone yourself. He looks amazing. He had so much personality in his nose alone, and it was exaggerated like a cartoon character, but it still worked. It didn't look ridiculous. He still looked very handsome. I thought I was like, is this the future of the Disney prince? I mean, he had personality. He wasn't classically handsome. He had... I think like all the characters in the movie, he had personality, the charisma, and that's very hard to create, especially uh, with animation, something that isn't real. And I think the Disney animation, uh, they were a little bit, it took them a while to get their CGI legs, I guess you could say, but I think they're definitely getting there and creating some of the most compelling uh, character, human character animation 
we've seen yet. I really loved it. I thought Cray was so well designed. I also loved Cray's offices. I loved Cray's labs. Cray had really cool toys, so I liked that quite a bit. Uh, although, speaking of the big scandal about how he sent uh, Callahan's daughter into that other dimension, it's like, was, I know that Fred's the only one in the movie who read comic books, but they must be familiar with sci-fi movies as well. And if someone goes through a dimensional portal and doesn't come out the other side, well, it stands to reason they're still in that other dimension. So I thought it was weird that Callahan never, you know, I guess, you know, when he tried to rebuild, and he did actually succeed in rebuilding that uh, other side to reopen the portal, but I don't know why his intention was to suck all of Cray's stuff into it instead of going in to find his daughter himself. That could have been a more interesting storyline if that's how he enlisted his students in a positive way to go after his daughter, and that's how it was scientific, and Cray was the villain, etc. I mean, that would, have, I think, have been a little bit of a neater storyline. This was a little bit children's readery to me, just me personally. All right, so after Cray, I liked Wasabi next. I, was, I thought Wasabi also had very good, um, you know, character design, and like Wasabi, I'm also a neat freak and a hypochondriac, so I could really relate to all of his humor, and I thought Damon Wayans Jr. did a nice job here as well. With the voice work. It's harder with these secondary characters though because besides Tadashi and Hiro there was really like zero character development and maybe Fred to some degree. Fred had some character development but that was like it. So let's move over to Fred. I have a love-hate relationship with Fred. I totally relate to Fred and I totally get what Fred is throwing down and I think I could have very long discussions with Fred but I kind of like didn't, didn't like the way he depicted comic book fans. I thought like he was like like the worst of comic book fans. I think no comic book fan would see Fred and be like, hey, that's me. I think they'd be like, are you saying that's me? That's not what I'm like at all. And I thought that, you know, Fred, it was good that he had a wealth of comic book knowledge, but, you know, he, he was totally unable to utilize any of it. Uh, and th none of the team, uh, the team had a very low su success factor, which made them a little hard to root for. Uh, you know, I, and I, I know they didn't have a training montage, and I thought it was refreshing that they didn't pretend they were all immediately great superheroes. Uh, but still, I was like, you guys are smart, you should be able to do a little better than this. And why is Hero so much better than you? I guess because he did bot fighting, and that was good to establish that that's, that was something that he, a world that he came from, which gave him a little bit of an extra edge here. But still, um, I was surprised, and it was a little bit difficult to watch from an audience perspective. But, but with Fred, I, as I said, I loved him and I hated him. <laughs> I think that he was everything that's awesome about comic book fans, but also everything that's bad. Uh, and I did like the twist that he had like a really wealthy family. He was kind of like a Bruce Wayne. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think they really did anything with that except, oh, now we need uh, you know uh, unlimited resources. Okay, bam, Fred supplied them. Like there was no dis there was no character development as to why Fred pretended to not have any money and why he wanted to hang out at the university spinning signs around with the science guys while he could have probably paid for his own think tank to come up with these ideas. You know, I, it would have been better if maybe he was there with Cray at the uh, at the convention trying to find things to invest because you know but he invested not for business but for fun that would have been I think a little bit more interesting uh, then Fred's dad I thought that was great I had no idea what they were going to do with him I love that it was Stan Lee and I immediately noticed it when they were going through and they showed the portraits I thought that was a really great touch that was my favorite Easter egg I had trouble spotting some of the other Easter eggs by the way I think they might have all been homages and not literal Easter eggs because I couldn't spot any genuine Marvel things besides Stan Lee could anyone else but I like Stanley being in there. Stanley never met a cameo he didn't like, uh, but he did a nice job. I thought he was wonderfully animated. I kind of thought that the superhero that he turned into at the end, or was, was revealed that he was in the after credit sequence, sequence, was kind of lame. But then I guess that's kind of like what Stanley creates these days. Uh, all his superheroes that he comes up with are also kind of lame. So, but I, I didn't like that aspect of it. Again, I was like, I love what you guys are trying to do here, but I don't like how it's turning out, and I think you're kind of making comic books look bad. You know, I don't think anybody watching this movie would be like, well, wow, maybe I should pick up a comic. They'll be like, oh yeah, you just reinforced every negative stereotype about comic book readers. I'm going to just watch this movie and stay away from comic books. And I'm like, another missed opportunity, Disney. All right, next, go, go, Tamago. Yes, she's very low down on this list. And that's because as someone who gets accused of being a feminist a lot, I think go, go, Tamago also represented all the worst qualities of you know, someone who wants women to be seen as equals. Uh, I didn't like that she was kind of mean to everybody all the time, and I really didn't like her line of woman up. The first time she said it, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of cute and inspiring. 
But the second time she said it, I was like, whoa, is this your catchphrase, go, go, tomago? If I were you, I would reconsider because it's really going to limit your social options. I just thought she seemed like a really angry person that like nobody would really want to talk to or hang out with. And I thought it made her very one note. And she also just seemed to be trying too hard. And for someone who was so like woman up all the time, I thought she was surprisingly ineffective. So I was like, you know, you're really not proving your argument here, go, go, tomago. I think you should just focus on being likable and one of the group because Honey Lemon, she seems really empowered and she doesn't have to go around doing stuff like that. Uh, so Gogo -Go Tamago, not a big fan. Then Callahan. I loved Callahan's nose as well. I thought he was a really great character design. He looked fantastic. Um, and I loved the way he looked as a villain. I thought the trench coat worked. It's always a trench coat, but what can you say? The trench coat does look cool. I liked the uh, kabuki mask. I thought that was really neat. And I loved the way he controlled Hero's Invention. Hero's Invention was by far and away one of the coolest things in the movie. But I thought that Callahan, again, was very simplistic. I thought that he was the villain only because, like, they needed somebody to be the villain. And it was very, you know, uh, un, you know, uh, very, it played very young, I guess you could say. And that, well, the villain, I, you know, the, having the villain be a mystery, I don't think was a good idea because it could only be somebody that they had met. And they hadn't met a lot of people, right? And the only reason I guess I didn't see Callahan coming is because I said, again, I was so hoping it was Tadashi because I didn't want him to be dead. But I think Callahan also wasn't very well established. And so there really wasn't a strong feeling of betrayal when it was him because you were like, oh, yeah, it's that guy we met in the hallway. Meh. Uh, so, oh, by the way, I want to go back to Cray for a minute. I didn't get to mention it, uh, but it would have been great if Cray had been like Varric from uh, The Legend of Korra. I think Varric is such a great character. And Cray even had an assistant. Uh, like, um, oh, I can't. Uh, I can't, he's, he's just been saying her name all the time in the last episode, Julie. He, had, he even had his own Julie, and I thought that was so cool. But Callahan, Callahan really was just there to become the villain. And again, I would be like, Callahan, you're so dumb. If you could build a portal back into the dimension where your daughter disappeared to, why didn't you take Hero's invention and go into the portal and go get her yourself? So stupid. All right, so the last thing I, did, I, uh, the thing I liked the least about the movie was Aunt Cass. I really didn't like Aunt Cass. I thought she was a horrible parent. I'm amazed that these two kids turned out as well as they did. Thank goodness they have some amazing genetics. I mean, she was really a sweet person, but I think that she gave her kids a little bit too... I mean, they weren't her actual kids, but she gave her um, nephews a little bit too much space. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I think even with a friend, you know, if someone's hurting that much or being that weird and staying all by themselves and not you know, talking to you for a long time, you know, you have to engage. You can't just be like, okay, here's some more space, here's some more space. I mean, sometimes, like, some friends can, I guess, but when you're a really good friend or you're a close family member, it's your responsibility to reach out to someone and say, you have to get out of this. I mean, Baymax was really the best parent, uh, you know, that Hero had because he had to take over for Tadashi, who truly was the best person that Hero had. And he died for no reason. All right. That's my spoiler review for Big Hero 6. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts about the film. Uh, did you have as much of a love-hate relationship with the whole thing as I did? Write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some more episodes right now.